Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Alright, this is going to be really, really hard for me to get through this intro, but once we get into the art, I'll, I'll be able to pull it together. But um, anyway, Kim Jong-ji passed away yesterday, I guess. And uh, it's just really, really shocking news. Um, uh, I don't even, I don't really know what to say. I, I uh, This video is going to be so brutal to just get into. Um, I didn't know Kim. I've been a fan of his work, like most people, since he, I, a lot of people were saying 2014 is kind of when they first met him and, or, you know what I mean? Like, like that's where you see American comic book artists talking about contact with him. Obviously he had been doing stuff before then, but so probably in 2014 or 2015, um, I became aware of Kim's work and, and, um, just, you know, he's he was such a special artist and he was doing something so unique and it's so hard to do anything individual uh, just you know as time moves on kind of everything's been done and um you know you had this guy that just came out of kind of nowhere it felt like and just kind of blew everything out of the water it's and it's not a way that like you know a lot of people would work in general but it was it was so inspiring on so many levels and there's a lot of really really great comments i was tempted to go through my instagram and post the the comments that were under my post but seeing the posts on kim jung ji's site um uh, you know there was way better tributes i didn't know what to say i i happened to just wake up in the middle of the night and it was very light in the room that i was in like it was all the lights were out but there was like I guess moonlight, I'm not sure, but I thought I was like, is it earlier than I think it is? Um, and I checked my phone to see what time it was. I saw that I had gotten a direct message from Eddie Choi, who's a real good friend of mine and knows Kim. And it was, it, I saw the time on it. I was like three I'm like, that's weird that he would text me so early. And, and, uh, then I, I saw the link and I was like, oh man, are you freaking kidding me so i found out at like four o'clock in the morning and then obviously it was just like you don't know what to think you're in shock and it's just it's like a it's i don't there's no word there was no words i didn't have anything that i could say but anyway we're gonna get into the art now and celebrate his life but i mean the one thing that i've seen a lot of people say and i think it's like if you could learn anything from this is that Kim lived his artistic life to the fucking maximum. The guy produced so much art. He produced so much great art. He made such a big impact on every artist that was aware of his work. Um, and he traveled all over the world. He seemed like an incredibly nice and very like, um, giving person you know like uh, so many people have sketches from him so many people have met him and watched him draw and had dinner with him and drawn with him at dinner and and just there's so many stories and stuff like that and um i think you know someone like him would would encourage you to do the same you know all right let's get into this fucking blows all right my i've got a lot of files open so my photoshop is going to be laggy for the first few so what we're going to do first is i went i went to yandex which is like my version of google the russian google we'll call it and um i uh i downloaded a lot of single images just just like like it's just like a google image search but what we're going to look at first is we're going to go back to the 2013 sketchbook and look at some of this work and then i've got probably four this will be a long video uh, i'm planning on doing at least an hour and it may spill over a little bit to like an hour and 15 so settle in it's this isn't going to be a downer of a video obviously any person that has ever lived if they pass away wouldn't want people to be sad about their loss but more to celebrate their life his work looks good in red <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to pull it together. Uh, fuck. Uh. 
what's interesting about this particular drawing is he's actually not using his uh, curvilinear perspective as much on it. There's a little bit of it, like on the ground plane of the characters, the way that they're standing, but he really... It'll be interesting, because I, I, I have his 2010 sketchbook, too. Um, I have uh, I can never remember. Uh, uh, um, Phallos. And then I got the the new sketchbook. I have some others, too. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd be interested in, like, when the curvilinear um, uh, perspective started to creep into his stuff a bit more. So this is, uh, this is someone else drawing him. Pretty cool. Pretty cool skiing. I wonder if it's hung to Kim and the stuff. I, I don't know if this was for a comic story because it, it it feels like a little sequential more more than his other stuff. It's funny because it, it is it, seeing this is reminding me of like when I first was exposed. Well, and the thing is, is so look, this is 2013 based on what I said in the beginning of the video that 2014 is when a lot of my friends seem to be like saying that like, oh, you know, I met him online or I, I had... I saw him at a comic con, so I'm trying to remember when it would have first been for me. I'll say this too because Dan Frega mentioned this in his really really nice tribute. Jim Lee wrote a beautiful one too, um, but Dan said that um, you know Kim liked a, a few of his posts on s social media at some point, and Kim has liked some of my drawings too. And that's always a pretty incredible feeling when you grab your phone and you check your notifications and it's like, Kim Jong-ji liked your drawing. You're like, oh my God, like seriously? Screenshot that shit. Want to put it on like a billboard. And, and uh, yeah, so, so you know, he was out there checking out art and um, it's just, it's like that, that really was a big deal. It really encourages you because, you know, I'm only two years into my professional penciling career. I'm still very, very green and have a long, long way to go to really, you know, fine tune what I'm up to. But um, that kind of professional um, acknowledgement really just helps you feel like, OK, like even though I'm I don't feel confident all the time, people are liking this stuff and it encourages you and it kind of makes you take it seriously. He's really good with motorcycles. There's a few. There's a few other pieces that I think I pulled um, when I was on Yandex. That uh, really, really incredible work with that. It's just you know, the designs and stuff like that are really, really neat. Sometimes he gets really crazy with the designs, and they're they're very um, almost. Not, I don't know. If surreal would be the right word, but you know, what I mean, they're they're pretty pretty busy. Um, and then other times he'll keep it more on point. I'm not sure what the red pen is on this. <laughs> this kid right here is eating funny slurping the noodles that's hysterical adam hughes told me that when we <laughs> i was just like when adam hughes was at wildstorm was kind of around the first time that i ever had sushi and there was a udon place that was a few doors down from wildstorm so we would go and get lunch sometimes and he he goes you're supposed to slurp your noodles it's like a sign that you're enjoying <laughs> So we'd get this this udon soup and it was really fun. These are nice, man! What great drawings! You know, on on my Patreon, I give a lot of lessons and reviews and stuff like that. And so many artists that I've reviewed and given lessons to are are very very inspired by Kim Jung Ji's work. And it's like, honestly, at first, it's it's hard to give someone. Uh, uh, like a uh, feedback on this type of stuff because it's like you're you know like he's really good at perspective he's got a huge huge mental library of weaponry um animals any kind of motor vehicles i mean there's a lot that he has got in his head and um you know But part of it is that he drew so much, too. These are great figures. Damn. Yeah, his passion for drawing and his ability to, to just create such a gigantic body of work is really, really phenomenal. I can't even imagine, like, like the stacks of sketchbooks and paper. And, I mean, 
any artist creates a pretty decent mountain of stuff, but this is like on, you know, 50,000. That's cute. <laughs> oh, man, that's really awesome. Oh, these are really cool. So we've got the cur the curving perspective here. So it almost reminds me a little bit of uh, not like exactly, but uh, some of the stuff that Jack Davis and Frazetta would do in the um, like '60s. Frank's got a couple of movie posters that have sort of a similar vibe. It's just you know more of a coincidence than anything, but these are nice. Man, beautiful horse joints. Ah, this one's funny. <laughs> the horse with human legs. That's so. Uh, this is a funny story. But so the very first time that I drew a horse was like um, at Wildstorm. I was trying to get sample pages together. And I had this idea. Whoa, um, <laughs> I didn't notice this before. Uh, and and I had this idea of doing the Wildcats during the Civil War. And so I had Voodoo on a horse wearing like a Civil War outfit. And um, I drew the horse pretty good, and I drew it actually from memory, so I didn't I didn't have any reference out. But when I the first time that I drew the front legs, they looked very human like, and I was like, okay, that's just creepy. And I had to keep working it till I got it. I think animals' back legs are, are a little more tricky than their front legs, just if you're gonna wing it. But um, <laughs> it looks like it's got a broom in its ass on this one. That's funny stuff. Yeah, he's got a funny, like a pretty raunchy sense of humor at times. So we got ostrich. Bilson cabbage. What is this all about? That would be weird to get this sketchbook and see your name written in it. Looks like different artists that maybe he wanted to research. Bob Peak is really good. It's interesting because, like, in comics... Um, oh, Amazing Scrawn Head. <laughs> I wonder if he was on the phone and someone was, like, telling him, like, books to check out. That's funny. I remember when Amazing Screw Head came... Amazing Screw on Head came out. Um... Yeah, like, 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 there are certain things that that Bill Sienkiewicz does that are very relatable to Bill Sienkiewicz. But the thing is, is that there's these artists that Bill was inf influenced and inspired by that were obviously around before Bill. For me, there was a British painter that I had seen. There's um, a Jimi Hendrix video called Welcome to Monterey. And there's this um, painter in the beginning of the video. And I saw this when I was a teenager. Uh, and he, he does graffiti on a wall, and he does it with splattery ink, paint. I mean, and he throws buckets of paint, and he takes his hands, and he's slapping it, and draws the bandana in the face, and ultimately draws a pretty kick-ass portrait of Hendrix, like a profile portrait of Hendrix, just basically blasting the thing with splattered paint. And I remember as a teenager going, like, I want to do art that looks like that. So... I know now doing it in comics that like whenever you where if you go there people are gonna go oh you're really influenced by Bill Sienkiewicz it's, it's splattered and colorful and it's like uh, I mean I am but but I mean I like Bill's stuff but I, I got the idea from this other dude <laughs> and many years before I saw Bill's work at least eight He draws himself actually a lot, or at least what I believe to be himself a lot. It's, it is funny. How do you reference yourself? <laughs> oh, I almost shut that one. These are nice. Damn, this is really cool. This pose right here is great. I like this a lot too. This one's really good. They're, I mean, they're all good, but... <sighs> Oh man, that is really dark. I thought when when I glanced at it, I thought it was a continuation of the ice skating thing, and I thought it was maybe like um, ice skaters getting dressed to like skate. And then I thought that there was just like a crazy guy in the room like begging one of the ice skaters or something. Then you look at it and you're like, okay, this is <laughs> way different than what I thought. I don't know what the story is here. Did she shoot him? 
some dark stuff. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, these are great. <clears throat> Man. It's, like I said, I, I I have to find some positive thing out of this. The only thing that I can think of is that I think that it's a wake up call to a lot of artists out there that like you 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 as far as we know, you only live once and you really, really have to take advantage of the time that you're given when you have good health and stuff like that. I know that Kim Jung-ji had diabetes. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that, that just go for it now, man. Stop dreaming about whatever you want to do and just go balls out or breasts out <laughs> into it. Because it's, it's, you know... That there's just no guarantees in life. There just isn't. Finding that more and more apparent in the last two years. <laughs> oh man, it's cool. <laughs> I love how the chunky his arms are. Those are nice hands too. Yeah, that is really good. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> So last night I was getting together a Michael Kaluta video and also a Roy Krenkel video. And I never ever do what I would call like quote unquote homework. But I, I spent maybe about an hour putting together all this stuff to do a video today of, I, I was leaning towards Roy Krenkel and then I was gonna do Kaluta possibly next. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just weird. like. I never do that, but uh, it was inspiring to see. But some of the stuff, the, the tigers and stuff are reminding me of Crinkle and Frazetta and stuff like that. Like, just those great artists, man. The, their sketches and, and the confidence in these lines. Like, for me, I would have 50 million lines all over this thing. It would be an absolute mess. And I really, really need to economize my line. It was one of the things that yesterday I was... I kind of make mental notes as I'm working and I kind of go like don't do this again this is a mistake that you're making over and over again you know a process mistake whatever it is like plan better you know use a different pencil lead if you're sketching if you're tightening up your pencil just the other, you know the pencils like use switch to this darker lead etc and um yeah seeing seeing sketches like this kind of reminds me too it's like like picture it and then try to draw it don't like i have a tendency to just put down a thousand lines of junk and then try to find it in that it does help i was watching a video of a painter yesterday and he was talking about like sometimes he'll just take a very light wash of a color and throw it all over the canvas so that there's just shapes even if they're very subtle on the canvas and that helps get to get his imagination going even if he works against those shapes it's still something besides a blank white canvas in front of you and i think that that may be kind of what i'm doing when i just start to destroy the paper right out of the gate it helps me not be um precious with it Man, this is awesome i like this he's got the leg in a few different positions I mean, just alone, what we've seen right now is a lot of drawings, you know? Oh, these are nice. God dang. So freaking good. I was going to recommend to people um, that... that um, you know, if, you, if you're interested in learning to draw or you're interested in learning to improve your drawing, one thing that you can do every day that really would add up is if you can find 30 minutes a day to work on just one thing that you're not very good at and really just, just it's 30 minutes, you go, I want to learn how to draw folds better today. Today, I want to learn how to draw the top of the hand. I don't, I always fake the knuckles. I don't know how to draw a hand in a glove, whatever it is, feet on the ground, wrinkles on pants. 
if you did that for a full year, you realize how many hours of extra practice of hard stuff that you're not good at, um, how much that would improve your work. So it was kind of a recommendation I was going to give, I think, my Patreon just in general. Uh, I try to find like little tidbits of advice that, that are, um, you know, easily doable not like oh you should study bridgman it's like that doesn't really mean much to someone that's struggling to learn to draw but focusing on one thing a day i think for 30 minutes it gives you a goal it gives you also a time frame and um the other the, the only other thing that i would add to that is is then then pay attention to your retention because it's one thing to practice something, even if you do a long session, if you, because I, I would have this happen. I would practice figure drawing for like six hours and I would do it day after day after day. And it's like, I'm going to draw a thousand heads. And a lot of times I would finish those projects and really not be a hundred percent sure what exactly I had learned from it. So retention is important. So see if the thing that you practiced on Monday, you can still do it on Thursday with no reference out, you know, just, just to see how it's going and what the what the result is and it'll slowly come together don't stress it one way or another if, if you're remembering it or not just be aware of if you are because as you get better at drawing all of a sudden you'll unlock larger doors and larger um, libraries that are actually in you that you don't realize that you have because if you could picture something right now and you're you can draw well enough then you can draw it but it just takes a level of um experience to get there man this is really cool A lot of back and forth point and drop. God, this is fucking great. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to zoom out a little bit. Man, that is cool. I'm assuming it's a two-page spread. Yeah. Um, let's do this. See them kind of together. Uh, is this way? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Oh, I know what I would have to do. Uh, oh, this is the cover piece. I didn't realize that. It's fine. Yeah, this is really, really nice. I'm like, obviously, I use a lot of black in my stuff, so I'm like, oh, ooh. <laughs> Man, her boots are great. This whole thing is awesome. <laughs> Look at this creepy dude. Yeah, man, that's great. Okay, now we'll look at the cover. This half of it, like, this character, I don't know why, looks like it could be almost like a Metal Gear Solid character. Like, like she's in camo or something like that. And the other stuff has different vibes to me. I literally, I cannot freaking believe that Kim jong Ji is gone. This just fucking sucks. I was saying to someone that I really, really just, I, I imagine being able to enjoy and get kind of more and more into his work over like the next like 10 to 15 years. And I really hoped within the next five or six years, as I improved with my own art, at some point I would meet him and be able to actually kind of like talk to him about drawing or something. I don't know, just some dumb fantasy I had, but it's like, you go, well, if one day if I get good, maybe like I could be friends with this guy. <laughs> Oh, these are really cool, but yeah. I, I'm obviously like it's kind of late in the video, but you know, my thoughts go out to all of his close friends and family. If you're ever watching this, it's it's just the the whole art community is just d devastated by this. It's, <laughs> this guy's so awesome. Oh yeah, and that ties in with the that video that I did where they were saying that the, the other artist that I did the video of was a pretty big influence on um, Kim. You can kind of see it in this video. I mean, in this this piece. Sorry, these are such cute little caricatures or whatever you want to call it. Man, it's great. There was a couple of color pieces that I saw that reminded me of. Um, oh shoot, am I gonna remember his name? Herman Mejia. I, I I know it's just a coincidence, but if you're familiar with Herman Mejia stuff, some of the was a, Herman Mejia does caricatures kind of like in a Mort Drucker way for Mad Magazine, and so so he'll do pen and ink pieces, but they're generally colored with watercolor. Uh, and some of Kim's watercolor stuff really actually reminded me a little bit of Herman Mejia, or vice versa, however you want to look at it. 
I'm amazed I remember Mejia's name. It's, it's like, I don't say it enough to um, have it like locked in. I kind of bum out like when I forget artist names, but I then I go like, man, you know so many artist names. Like the fact that you can remember as many as you do is pretty good. <laughs> So again, I don't, I don't really have a, I don't have like a big peer group outside of YouTube that um, I talk art with. To be honest, it's like my none of my friends that I grew up with are really into like comics or art. So if I if I'm talking with them, you know, it's usually music. So I'm a bit of a lone wolf with uh, my my comic and drawing obsession. <laughs> I I texted I texted four of my friends yesterday. Roger Dean, the world famous artist, Roger Dean followed me on Instagram the other day, and I mean he only follows like two hundred and fifty people. I was stunned, um, uh, but uh, I told my friends, and only one of them even really replied and was like, "Ah, oh, it's cool." <laughs> it's, like, it's like Roger Dean, come on, you assholes! <laughs> like it's a big deal. Very like I was so excited. Man, this is great. Okay, so let's do this. Let's shut these and let's get into some more higher res files. These are great, but let's get to um, uh, some other stuff. I, I I don't think I can shut these any faster. The downside of uh, PDF opening a PDF in Photoshop is not a quick way unless I shut. I I have to hit no. Let me. I can do it with a shortcut key. Let me just move my coffee. We'll open the stuff that I um. that I grabbed or er, well I, I will leave these open but I don't want Photoshop to lag so just give me a sec but um yeah it's like if you try to shut the, or I guess I could do it this way this will work nice one i've got actually a big file of that though it, like it reminded me almost of like something that could have been for like walking dead i don't i don't know if it was but it had that um man there's so much good shit hit like his body of work is just absolutely insane i mean it really is honestly like if you just drew this much you would you would get good just from drawing this much even if you started out like you could literally start out today and just go like one day i want to draw good just draw this much you'll you'll get really good just from doing this much drawing <laughs> draw everything like i i i uh always equate it to like Ro um robert crumb years ago for whatever reason i think i think i had seen the crumb documentary and it kind of got me inspired because i i like to just draw random stuff um you know and there's a level of discipline that you have to have in comics which is consistency and you're going to tell stories and stuff like that but i really I love the idea of just, it's like, oh, I saw a cool pack of matches. I'm going to draw that. Oh, I saw a photo in People magazine, and I like that. I'm going to draw that. I mean, there's there's a an appeal uh, of approaching art like that for me just because of, that was kind of how I would draw as a kid. Whatever I wanted to draw, I would just draw. Um, and uh, you kind of lose that when you... Um, become a professional artist and usually you know in particular if you're working for a company you know you get like a script or whatever it is and you have to draw someone else's stories which is so like not how i was ever interested in drawing it's like someone's gonna make up what i draw fuck that um that's <laughs> like, why i never did it you know honestly like the idea of someone else writing stories for me is just like what are you kidding me Make up my own stories. All right, so let's get to this. These are going to be high res scans. We can go into full screen mode and really just take this thing off. This is awesome. These are more current pieces. Most of these. It's funny because when whenever I glance at this piece, I always pick. It looks like this guy is almost holding a guitar, like, like, like it's like is he playing guitar, Guitar Hero behind him? But he's holding a book open. Um, but this is awesome. I love the way he draws the pants, those really long folds, like right here, and how it gets like all cr cr the crinkle folds in here. This is just great shit.
I was going to say, oh, I wonder what he's inking this with. And then I remembered he just draws it in ink, but he is using a micron. Um, I can't. It might be a brush pen. Probably is. Ooh, yeah, I like this one. Oh my god. <laughs> this is like, like if if it like I mean if it didn't have the gray on it, like I would so buy these as like a coloring book. You know, like uh, let me see. I'll turn it grayscale and just remove the a little bit of the gray. But man, like it ate up the line art a little bit. But man, like a Kim Jong G coloring book would be so freaking fun come with a little set of pens and you could just like chill out at night put on like a good movie or some music and then just color this with markers oh my god it's so cool and so fun yeah, yeah see man this is interesting too so i've i one thing that i i found that i do that's a really bad habit but seeing it in Kim's illustration work like this, if you want to call these illustrations, I don't, you know, they don't really need a label. They're just drawings, but I, I guess they would be considered illustrations is when I draw pages. Sometimes I lose control of my size relationships of characters, meaning that like, it's not, a, and then this guy could be a giant to be clear. I think that he is, but um, sometimes I'll draw characters that are too big next to characters that should theoretically be the same size. But then you see stuff like this and you go, maybe this is where I'm getting that from. It's just because I like these wallpaper type images and I'm not as concerned with like, oh, well, this guy's six feet and this other character is six feet. So they should both be six feet. I just like to draw cool things. <laughs> it's like I'm super disciplined, but then I lack discipline and sort of common sense. That's the charm of artists, I guess. Like, I like this super buff cat looking back at us. <laughs> he's, oh, he's making masks. He looks very bitter. It's okay. I think it maybe it's not a cat. Is it like a lemur? Look at him. Like he's helping out too. The pug. He really, he really had a funny sense of humor with this stuff. Like, I look at this and I just go, like, I don't even know how long, like, this, something like this would take me at least three days to draw. Would take me a, a day to lay it out. And, and then I would just be like, oh, God, like, here we go. And then you just have to work out each drawing. And somehow he's able to just, like, knock this stuff out. Again, I absolutely love, love, love color on his work it looks so good in black and white but man i could look at this shit all day ah it just looks so good man this is a great drawing oh right like see and this is really interesting so we've got this woman and she's clearly like reaching in between this guy's legs and he looks he almost looks like he's on like a surgery table but uh, I guess it's this guy. It doesn't... His upper body doesn't match completely with his bottom body, but I, I think it is supposed to be, like, the same guy. But, yeah, this is kind of, like... I prefer to draw this way sometimes. Randomness. This is really nice. Let's try and figure out what she's doing. What are you up to, lady? Suppose this is a hard pose to draw with the feet like this. It's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Oh, yeah, this is cute. This is really, really nice. I'm a big fan of, like, Vietnam movies and stuff like that. And, um, boy, he really captured the inside of this, like, helicopter, I think, really, really well. Like, it's pretty nuts. I, oh, there's even another one down here. Man, this is a great shot. Fuck, he's so good. What an inspiration, man. Seriously, this is just so good.
Now this looks like it's graphite and ink. And I wonder what the circumstances are where he chooses to do um, pencils to ink. So if anyone knows, let, let me know. Um, or, or if you know what this piece is for, you can timestamp it if you want. But um, yeah, like it's interesting. I mean, I, there, I, I just I don't know when he decides to use pencil and then pencil to ink. Obviously, when he's doing these demo pieces, which this is nuts. I wish this was a little bit of a better um, photo of it. I could probably clean it up a little bit. It's not going to be very high res, though, regardless. But um, um, Man, this is a banger. But again, you can see this, the, the different sizes of things. I mean, he's got a character right here who's, you know, like, like fairly big. And then, you know, just as you move around the scene, things sort of fluctuate in size. I guess I think because I've looked at so much art like this, it's not a consideration that I focus on as much as um, if I purely looked at uh, comic art. And I look at a lot of digital art, too, so that probably also affects it. Ah, oh, this is so good. This was one of the first, um, when I was pulling pieces on my own just from Yandex, I grabbed this. I was saying to a couple of people that, so when, when I do San Diego Comic-Con, where my table is in Artist Alley, um, I'm kind of right at the edge of a row. And to the left of my table, if I'm standing looking straight out, there's um, uh, usually Anatomy Tools is there that sell the really good, like, Tarada books. And they have um, uh, the, uh, uh, what is his name? I have his DVD over here somewhere. Oh, Carlos Wante. They they sell the really good like anatomy statues. But right behind them is Super Annie or or Kim's Kim's booth. So if I kind of lean my head back, I can generally see if Kim Jung Ji is there drawing and stuff like that. So for about the last like eight years, most of the time that's where his table is. And um, so I've 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 had the pleasure of watching him draw several times, but I've never met him personally. I do think that I bought a book from him in person. And he signed it, uh, but it was a few years ago. So I'm a little. I'm a little shady on the memory, and it may, I may have just watched a friend of mine buy a book from him and sign it, so I can't even, I don't remember. This is awesome. I'm going to lighten this just a little bit so that we can see it without the sort of color on it. Ah, so good. I was joking, say that of all the people that I've ever met that are professional artists, I think Eric Canetti and probably Carl Stianda draw the most. Eric Canetti, I think, draws the most of anyone that I know. But like, if you were friends with Kim Jung Ji, like, <laughs> then nobody would come close. But Eric Canetti draws a lot. I'm gonna say that. Man, I bet New York Comic Con is just gonna be like, like, just a sadness there because i i'm under the impression that, that that's where kim was headed um i know jim lee said that um he was gonna hook up with him and have dinner um it's like a tradition that they have it's just really sad this was interesting so there's a piece that frank frazetta did of a nude girl with dark hair that's really really similar to this People that are big Frazetta fans will probably know the one that I'm talking about. I think she has dark hair. She might have white hair. But it's like, I want to say it's almost like, like a devil girl. I think it's a watercolor piece. But it's funny. It's a really similar pose. And again, I know that Kim just probably drew all this stuff out of his head. But I wonder if um, in his mind he was able to summon up that image. Probably not. I and mean, he probably just drew it. But And, and maybe if I saw the Frazetta piece, it's different than what I remember. But I, I remember it being pretty similar to this. Not with the feet tied up, though. <clears throat> yeah, so this was the motorcycle that when I was talking about earlier, like how good he is with bikes. Like, this is super, super hyper. Like, I don't know if over-design would be the right word. But it's a very, like, man, there's a lot of shit going on with that bike. But, um, man, it's crazy, like, how well he can, like, freehand all these ellipses and um, stuff like that. I'll, I'll zoom down on this in a sec.
<laughs> it's a shame this isn't a little higher res. This is nice too. I really like this. Um, like, I don't know if it, I want to call it a mag wheel, but it, maybe that's not a mag wheel. Maybe mags are these. I can't remember. I haven't even used that term in like 30 years. Uh, um, but yeah, these are really, really cool. As a kid, I was a big fan of um, like the Rat Fink art um, and like those kind of monster car things, like Matchbox cars. So this is like kind of has a little bit of that vibe. This is cool too. Again, the, like these monster cars. Oh man, that is so cool. I remember Lee Bermejo telling me that I think he went to a dinner with Kim Jung Ji, and he said that um, he was able to look at one of Kim's sketchbooks in person. Like Kim had brought a sketchbook, and he said he was looking at it. And this is coming from Lee Bermejo, who can draw his ass off and is really good and has worked around a lot of great artists, <laughs> on top of the fact that he's a great artist. And he said that Kim's sketchbook overwhelmed him and almost brought him to tears. It was so good. He told me this years ago. Um, he, he said he just, it was like a wave of just awe went over him, seeing, seeing what this guy could do. And I get it. The shit is on another level. I really like this. <laughs> when I was pulling the pieces, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely show this one. I, it's just interesting. It, like, the 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 story behind it kind of, like, I go, like, where exactly are they? Is this, like, Saudi Arabia? Or what is going on? Cause some of it's, like, yeah, it's just, it's, like, I'm getting all kinds of odd, like, this is, a lot of his stuff is very whimsical and kind of more crazy. This was great, too, again. That little bit of color on his work, I just think is so neat. Ah, oh, it's so good. Oh man, let's lighten this a little bit. Oh, this is Akira. Fuck, man. All right, let me do one more. Damn. God dang. That is so good. Jeez Louise. <laughs> the baby is awesome. Man, okay, like, I'm just floored. It's, I, I don't... The thing is, is it, I just don't understand how he can do this stuff. Like, well, I mean, he's so good, but like, he's so productive. This is an exhausting piece to produce. Most people that would do this, the, the date on this is. I can't really read it. 2019, maybe? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um,. You know, a piece like this, this, this is, this is, you You know, you get done with this, you kind of need a nap, and, and, um, you know, you're excited that you accomplished something like this, but, but it's a lot of work, and this dude's just, like, he was always up for more. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Again, this kind of has a little bit of that Herman Mejia, um, similarity that, that they both hold. Bigger is better. Rich. Richard. Oh man, he draws the best freaking tigers. Oh, this is really cute. This looks like it's a spread. I, you know, again, this was just an image that I got off of basically a Google like search engine, so. Be careful if you do use Yandex though, because it's like, it's occasionally you'll get some kind of fishy files. So just user beware. But I generally am able to find bigger scans of stuff there. Their search engine is a little more um, like Google. 
image searches used to be, so that's why I like it, is it they tend to have nice big scans if they're available. It's not a pirate site, to be clear, but it's Google is trying to direct you to certain things. Generally, Pinterest and some other shit. It's like garbage. This is nice. I thought this was a really cool piece because I think, like, like the center of focus is obviously it looks like Kim and maybe his family having um, like lunch or dinner or whatever it is. But I like this this little narrow sort of street here, whatever this is, and then these people checking out the flowers and just the whole the whole vibe of it. It was very quaint and something that I mean you wouldn't really see probably in the United States, but it's really really cool. I mean, Kim lived a very full life. He traveled the world doing what he loved. And drew everywhere, everywhere in the world. I mean, though they they really really pushed it just to the limit. So it's kind of every artist's dream. It's interesting. Whenever I see him um, draw someone with the camera here, I almost in a weird way always picture that like the old school like TV camera. I always kind of feel like it's it's like his mind's eye filming scenes you know i don't think that that's really symbolically what he when he puts it in it means but um you don't see a lot of people drawing this these television cameras that are kind of vintagey i guess they still do use them though for like football games and stuff like that huh this was the first piece that i pulled for this really really cool man the this chimpanzee has got a great expression damn So that's really interesting. This guy's got feet hands. Hand feet. That's crazy. He's got the double face thing going too. He's really cool. Oh, <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oof, what is going on here? What is this animal right here? A rabbit, I guess? Yikes. What is this? It's like baby Hellboy. It's like Miss Piggy and like... Goodness gracious. And this guy's getting his head lobbed off. This is a rough, rough scene. <laughs> was making me think of this this was this is a kim jong ji piece and then someone painted this here yo ho yo did like a portrait of him it's nice i like the rabbit fighting the planes it's got a little bit of like a wally wood kind of vibe oh my god this is crazy so this is batman i see robin let me try to light this way up a little bit with the, um, this. <laughs> the eyeball guys are cool, actually. Yeah, this dude's weird like I am. Like, I would do, uh, I, I'm down with weird stuff like that. Eyeball people. I kind of, I sometimes rein it in a little bit, because I don't want to alienate fans that really are like, this stuff is too weird, Rich. Stop it. This was a nice one. I almost, uh, like, I don't know what it is. It almost feels like he's teaching, like, an art class or something like that. I don't know what the guy with the baseball bat, is he keeping the kids in line? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that... The, I honestly thought that this file didn't save. I tried to save it, and it was a WebP file. Um, this is from Omphalos. Um, so it's kind of like... It, the whole book is an adult material, but some of it is. But uh, it gets gets pretty edgy in it. Um, but uh, I did I, I actually did grab that book. Um, the reason being is that, that I knew that it would be different work from him. 
and uh, I I thought that it would be interesting to see not not all the adult content per se, but but the fact that he was he was going into it as as uncensored as possible, and and that that held the curiosity for me uh, over um, the other stuff because I had other books of his. It did not disappoint because even the non-adult stuff in it is really really kick-ass. This is so great. This reminds me of there was a movie when I was a kid called Bugsy Malone, and um, it was like an old gangster thing, but with kids and cream pie guns. <laughs> this is like, uh oh, Sir Barks a lot. I'm gonna shut this. The dog's name isn't Sir Boxelot. That's my nickname for my neighbor's dog. They have an Australian Shepherd that, like, is very vocal. <laughs> I actually don't know what the dog's name is, to be honest. They live behind me, so they're not really, like, um, neighbors that I see. We share a back fence. Man, this is great. Fucking A. <laughs> Wow, god damn. Like, seriously, how the fuck does this guy do this? I mean, it's a pretty nice layout. He's got everything very evenly spaced out. It's an interesting thing, because he usually... He, he he doesn't normally lay something out like this, where you've got sort of like object, 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 and everyone... Um, uh, occupies a certain amount of space, but then it has space between them. He he generally will do quite a bit more overlapping. Like you'll get things like this, where like this wolf is overlapping the dog, and and this guy's knee is overlapping this dog, and stuff like that, or like this area here. But yeah, it's unusual when it's so like um, depart departmentalized. But it looks really good. That extra space actually is quite nice i really would love to get like a nice print from my office of his work um I, and i had thought that in the last video too but it would be really cool to have like a poster of something of his get like a few of them and i could rotate them like in a certain spot on my wall this was nice too um kim generally travels with a bit of a posse that like i, I it's rare to see him without a few people around him. I don't know if they're assistants or people that are co-workers or from the company and stuff like that. But, um, and that might not be a self-portrait of Kim. I think it is though. But, uh, I think this is like one of his right hand men and it could, he could even be an artist. I don't know. I'm not that super like aware of all of it, but this is a beautiful, beautiful piece, man alive. It's just um, uh, it's just unbelievable what this guy has accomplished. Accomplished, you know. I, I'm, I'm just blown away. Let me see one thing really quick. Okay, we're good. We can go like another twenty or thirty minutes. I'm fine with that. I think that this is is as healthy of a thing as we can do under the circumstances. And um, you're never gonna hurt yourself looking at some good art like this. So. Oh man, it's so cool. We'll open up one of the other PDFs I have. I've got some interesting stuff. Um, again, it may not be super high res, but uh, the decapitated head thing is funny. He would have been a pistol in high school. I bet his notebooks and stuff like that were covered in drawings. It'd be funny if they weren't. <laughs> this was the piece that when I was um, shutting the other files, um, I... Uh, I said it kind of reminded me of Walking Dead piece. It's clearly like soldiers, but uh, man, it's good. Maybe they are fighting zombies though. All right, let's soak this in because I, 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 overlapping characters in such a dense scene like this, it's it is tricky to lay out. I'm constantly trying to do things like this, and um, boy, it gets it gets dense. Because like right here, he's kind of got like almost four characters in one little area. You've got foreground guy behind him guy behind him and guy behind him oh see and that was the point of what i was talking about before where i was saying that my sizes get messed up so what will end up happening is is i'll sketch something out and it'll kind of look fine and then you know you've got a character standing here and a couple of guys here but all of a sudden this character will look too big to be here like 
like size wise, he's either a very, very like a nine foot tall person or, and I'm not saying in Kim's drawing, but that's, that's the thing that I've been having issues with. Or like, I'll have a character jumping here, but I'm like, well, if he's jumping here, wouldn't he be the same size as this dude? Like, and then I, I get like, um, I'll try to re rein it in and have them the same size, but then it doesn't look right that way. So there's, there's a, uh, experience that I lack in that department right now that uh, I'll, I'll slowly work out. But yeah, it's like this guy would have to be in front of this guy to be this big. But this character, because he's got darker lines around him, kind of does look like that he's in sort of front of this guy. But I think this dude is in front of him. And then where is this guy in the plane? He, he to me, looks like he's about at the same distance as this guy. But this is an unfinished piece, but yeah, it's it's tricky. This is really, really laid out nice though. I'm sorry. That's great. Really, really good. Alright. Beautiful. Beautiful. this was interesting this came up a few times i kept like when i would look at the thumbnails it would always catch my eye because of the um the angle of the shot like always i love um that three-point perspective vibe this this may be more than three-point perspective but but it's pulling up that way um but it's really really cool this is interesting because this is almost like a montage because it's really not the same scene as this and this isn't either Wow, look at this. Damn. I almost think that... Was this the piece that we were looking at before? And it was like this area of it? Yeah, it was. It was. Okay, so this is the full piece. Because we had seen from about here... I don't remember how low it went. But to right about here. Somewhere over here. Because I remember seeing this and going, there's definitely got to be more. Man, this is so nice. slowly move through this see but here's little tigers next to you know what i consider human sized characters obviously a, a tiger is going to be pretty big but um yeah there's there's a, a variety of size relationships that these characters all possess um within the piece messes up my mind <laughs> Like, why can't you have, like, a giant guy standing next to a normal human guy? Wow. It's, it's crazy, too. There's really not any dark ink lines on this guy, but it really actually works quite well. How he's just um, blocked in with the, um, the more washy colors. This is so cool. Man, look at her shoes. Whatever they were called. <laughs> He's awesome. Is that a badger? <laughs> <laughs> He's so awesome. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh man, look at this. Holy shit. It looks like Voodoo. Is that Voodoo from Wildcats? I'm going to say that's Voodoo from Wildcats. She's got like kind of a whole can, but um, this is like pretty interesting. I mean, obviously, anyone can have a demon hand. This is really wild, too. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, good. That's oh, really cool. It's that creepy, that creepy robot dog thing that you can kick and it keeps coming at you. It's going to kill us all in another 15 years. It's going to have armies of those things. Charging across the plains, coming to get us.
Man, that is a crazy looking pig. Look at the face on this thing. His connection with drawing animals is pretty insane. I it, it does make me wonder if if um he was born in a city or if he um had a lot of animals around when he was a kid. I mean, obviously he draws animals that you wouldn't have on like a farm, but um uh you know, it's interesting. Doesn't everyone have an elephant in their farm? <laughs> this is a funny piece. Dude, his, oh my god, color poster art of his stuff would be so fun. I love that as a kid. You could get like, you'd get like three posters and a set of pens. And the posters were black and white and they could color them. Okay, so then let's grab another. Um... This was interesting. So this is like a, I don't know if it was like a short story. But um, I had never seen it before, but it was pretty cool. Start at the top. Oh, I guess that was the top. So this is, it was called Kim Jong-ji Panels, and it was just a PDF that was online. And I was like, I'll check it out. It definitely looks like his stuff. We'll see as we get through this. And it, it's possible that this was done, you know, in 2010 or something like that, or maybe even a little earlier, 2008. Um, Kim, Kim was, he'd be 47. He was 47 years old. So I don't like, you know, he obviously is drawn for a long time. You know, I mean, obviously he was probably kicking ass in his, his 20s, just as much as what we've seen now. Oh, man, it's so good. This is definitely a little more tame than um, what he, he ended up doing, but you can see that he could draw very, very well. But yeah, I wonder, like, if anyone knows, let me know what year you think that this is from. And maybe the last page will be dated. We'll see. But I'm going to guess that this is, this is definitely older than 2014, 13, the first sketchbook we looked at. But it may not be. Some of this stuff is pretty, pretty damn good. I mean, not that, it, that any of it's bad, to be clear. But I'm just saying that, like, um, he's definitely more reined in. But you could see why he was so damn good. Wow. He has really, really fun shapes in this stuff. These are very, very beautiful um, if you just like try to imagine the silhouettes of all these characters, they're very bouncy and very robust with like form. Good. Um, uh, there's like a good bend to things too, like kind of like not a lot of straight lines. Whenever I see stuff like this, it always reminds me of Black Sad. It's interesting. I'm, I'm wondering if this is all him. This, I mean, this definitely could be him. It kind of doesn't look like his work, but I mean, who knows? This definitely does. This does. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's other pages. Maybe it was like a combination story or something like that. Wow. God, he's so crazy. We'll go for like 15 more minutes and then I, I should get going, but I um, wanted to do a nice long video. Oh man, that's so cool. Really cool, like kind of um, 
down lighting on these characters some nice like shadows and stuff going on here it gives it really nice form like this it's really like it gives a nice lush feeling this is good too damn oh, man that's so cool <laughs> this guy's body <laughs> this is just wild Oh, he's got sushi. Yum. <laughs> I like sushi. Oh, <laughs> it's cute. Again, they're, they're, like like a lot of the wines that he uses. I'm actually on my Cintiq. It's funny. I have my Cintiq hooked up right now. I don't know where my stylus is. I haven't used it in a while. I'm probably going to find it. Oh, wait, that's it. No, it's an eraser. Hold on. Let me see if I can find my stylus really quick. I'm moving the mic, so... This is it. This is it. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I got my drafting table up at an angle now, so when I pencil, um, I have a better angle, but uh, I can't put it down because it's an older drafting table. And it's, but yeah, a, a lot of his lines are are very curved. So so there's a lot of these types of shapes. It's nothing nothing is sort of static there's very very little that he's drawing that's straight um you know everything's got like some really nice curves to it even the feet and stuff like that like you know what i mean there's like really really fun shapes so it really it it translates through the whole page and you're never getting these very boring sort of straight lines and there's a little minimal of it on some of the bikes but it's really really like um subdued but the overall vibe of everything is very, you know, just really, really fun, like round shapes. So, come on. I do have my glasses. Oh, yeah. I don't really wear glasses except when I draw now, but um, it helps when I'm this close to the computer screen. That is awesome. Great hand, another great hand. These guys' faces are awesome. Okay, that's cool. Damn. Is oh, it is on the back of his bike. I was like, is that like I couldn't tell, but like I thought it was a can of beer or something. Man, that's really cool. Yeah, I have this. I have this fantasy that, like, because I'm always so busy that I never get an opportunity to really settle down and like enjoy like my art books and stuff like that. Which is one of the reasons, is a lot of people know that I do these videos. Is it's, I get to kill two birds with one stone. I get to look at art, but then I'm also being able to share something with with um, you all. Um, but uh, yeah, I was was like, man, I can't wait till I I have some time off where I can really like sit down and kind of like get into like Kim Jung Ji's world because it's very complex and there's such a variety of things in it that um, to just surfacely sort of dip your toe in it, you can definitely do it. But um, I kind of wanted to like, you know, sort of chronologically check it out. So let's do the 2011 and we'll wrap it up with this. We'll do about seven to 12 more minutes worth of stuff. So this will be a little bit older, but uh, I'll just grab a few. I'm going to do them as images. Er, well, hold on. Let me do this. Right. Let's check out these blue pencil joints. I'm curious what this all is. Let's see if we can get something that's a little different. I'm curious if they're actually drawn in blue pencil or what it is. Oh, they are. Okay. Interesting. I didn't understand. I, I noticed this in something else that I was looking at of his, that, that, that there was a bunch of drawings that had like sort of circles and stuff on them. And I didn't know if, if um, <clears throat> it was done as a production thing or if he was doing it on his own or what the meaning of it was. But uh, this might have been one of the pieces, funny enough. That's pretty random that I would just grab from the middle of the sketchbook and find one that I'd seen. But I remember this. Let's see. Oh, that's nice. I guess it was a spread that we were just looking at. Yeah, this stuff. 
Okay, these were these were the pieces I saw. Wow, what a weird coincidence. That's funny that I grabbed the batch of shit that um, I saw when I was getting the file together. Because I didn't open this PDF, to be clear. So I'd seen them somewhere else as a group. Um, but that... So that's a hand-done circle. But again, his his use of perspective with ellipses is very, very impressive. Um, you see it all over his stuff, but he's really, really got a good eye for um, form and space and, and how to um, indicate that. His ellipses can be kind of a, a little bit of a pain in the ass. Certain angles are harder than others. Um, it's really, really good stuff. Man, it's cool. Really, really good. I don't know why this reminds me of something from my childhood, but I can't think of what it was. Playing with army army men in a swimming pool? <laughs> I don't know. I used to have, my next door neighbors have a pool, um, and uh, I would uh, I would go over there as a kid, and they would let me swim in it, and like I would bring all my army men and like little boats and stuff like that, and I would hang out sort of at this one side of their pool and put every like set they had like a very kind of tropical-y background or um backyard so i'd set up all the army men and then i would i would swim in the pool and play with them like on the edge of the pool <laughs> oh the simple times yeah see i don't i really don't know what this is all about What does it mean? Oh, that's cool. God dang it. It's like, he sums it up so good. Now, what's interesting is, so for, for me as someone who's taking my stuff from pencils to inks now, you know, when, when you ink something like this, this is challenging because you've got, you have really the, the center of focus, obviously, is this this up here. Um, and then if you get down in here and you ink everything too detailed, it can it can kind of draw too much attention to stuff like this. So there's really a knack of how much black to spot on something like this. Like, do you connect all the lines? Looks like they've got some little um, like pontoon boats or little rafts around it too. But um, really nice piece. But yeah, inking stuff can kind of be a bitch because all of a sudden this nice shaded thing becomes jet black and once this has all the black in it this thing is just going to move right forward in your face because it's going to be so graphic um and if you don't have it balanced out well you can kind of go white black white or gray like white gray but um yeah anything with a lot of black on it is going to be a super um uh, noticeable wow this is cool God, he's so good with guns and gear. <laughs> he could have, like, it would have been really interesting to see him do, like, a war comic in this style with these big-headed dudes. The, 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 the level of detail and accuracy on the gear um, is so good that it makes it believable, even though they have big, almost like, bobbleheads. Oh, that's cool. I like his missing eye. Or see-through head, whatever it is. Damn, it's so cool. Oh, that's neat. Wow. Oh. This reminds me of um, Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> Llama face. I uh, love that movie. <laughs> this guy's cool. That may not be a llama. I apologize to any llama. <laughs> any llama fans. Man, this is a great pose. Holy shit. Dude, that's such a great, like, little gesture. Oh, man. Ooh. Damn. This dude looks like a savage. <laughs> this is badass. Man, he was great. I uh, hate to say was, too. Ugh. It's just a fuck. The fact that he was forty-seven too—it's—it's it's like 
I mean, he literally could have drawn like amazing shit for another 30 years easily. Roger Dean is 78 and he's still painting his ass off, you know. Al Hirschfeld was drawing up, I think, I think up into his 90s, you know. Um, but go for your dreams. That's Kim would want you to draw. He would want you to release your spirit and art and be free and just be creative and and have fun with it. I think that's really the moral of the story here is that, that he loved what he was doing. He loved to share it and travel and um, he was art, you know. Oh, this is so good. Cool. That's pretty awesome. like not 100% sure what exactly is going on here like, but uh, it's pretty interesting drawing okay we'll, we'll look at a few more wow what is this place I've never been to a restaurant like this or I guess it's not a restaurant it's like a strip club or something they're weighing drugs so this is like this is the drug hangout I'm tripping out on this bald girl I guess some of them are, they have their heads shaved for a reason. So they don't steal the coke in their hair. <laughs> Alright, so let's, we'll open that again and grab some more. Uh, what was this? 2011. Okay. I'll grab some different pieces from it. We'll go towards the back of the book. Uh, will this work? If I just do a blind pull? Alright, what is this? Okay, yeah. We may not get through all these, but um, we'll attempt it. But yeah, hopefully everyone has a good day. I mean, obviously, you know, keep Kim in your thoughts. Maybe share some tribute art that you enjoy. And um, I, like I said, New York Comic Con is just going to have a black cloud over it. I think people are going to be so bummed out. Um, I'm nearly sure that's where he was headed. Um, and... Uh, you know, uh, just people are going to be stunned. It's a huge, huge loss for comics and art. That was uh, one thing I say in a lot of my videos is, is Kim is so famous at doing art that I have, I was saying that I don't really have friends outside of comics that, that are working professionals or people that I know from online, um, that are into art, but they know that I do art for a living. So they'll go, Hey, have you ever heard of that guy? And I always know exactly where the conversation is going. Because the, the, I'll have seen a video of Kim on like YouTube or TikTok or wherever the different stuff gets shared. And um, I'll go, yeah, 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 Kim Jong-ji. Because even my wife knows who he is. And friends, like again, that, that don't really follow comics or art. But that's how, that's how widespread his work is. This is really cool. Flying Tigers, literally. Yeah, so this is this is definitely early work. So this is 2011, I think it said, if I remember correctly, against all odds. <laughs> draw, 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 friends. I mean, you can see clearly how much he's improved uh, like in, in the 11 years of him doing stuff like this and this is at a high level like anybody would be thrilled to pieces to be able to pull stuff off like this and um even at this level he pushed his work so far beyond this it's insane Yeah, if someone showed this to me, I'm not 100% sure I would guess that it was him. There's little parts of it that remind me of it, but these these pieces, the last few that we've looked at, um, you know, they look good. I don't know if I would recognize this Kim's work. This this uh, looks like him. That looks good. 
I, I could eat that. I'm hungry, actually. Wow. This is really inspiring. I mean, I, it's going to take me a day or two to, like, soak all this in and kind of, like, I, I, I've, I've, the last couple of weeks, I've really been kind of soul-searching myself for my art and how I can improve and get a level of consistency of what I'm up to right now. And um, each day I was kind of taking mental notes, as I said earlier in the video, and kind of trying to um, eliminate bad habits or reaffirm approaches that I should be doing. But I should be doing more of this stuff. I should I should find time each day to try to do things like this. Um, uh, to just get a wider library of imagery in my head and I can fantasize about it or I can actually do it. This is cool. This is like the more detailed version of it. Um, but, but you know, you just, if you do it, you'll get better at it. It's the bottom line. Man, this is great. They stand high in the, this back area. It must be elevated back here. That's interesting. <laughs> that's cute uh you still i you still like i don't know if that's really a cup of noodles but i love cup of noodles but they're i don't eat them very often anymore because they're not really <laughs> they're not super good a lot of sodium <laughs> could uh, could that's probably something else it looked like cup of noodles in black and white this doesn't as much it looks like it might be miso or something so i've never had it served in a cup like that Yeah, it's crazy. Like, like, if if I was to guess, I would think that this is a like, this looks like a much more mature artist than Kim would have been at the age that he did this. Meaning that like, this looks like a guy who's drawn manga since like the fifties, and is an older guy drawing it like at, at a more modern time. Has like has a little bit of a more vintage, um, a vintage vibe to it. But it's crazy that. Out, out of this came this guy that's like about as cutting edge as you could get. This work is far more um, conservative in terms of um, the approach. These are great. These these very like matter of fact like line drawings. Boy, I tell you, if you can get this get this kind of stuff down, you're really you're moving in the right direction because it's a lot of drawing, um, especially blocking and stuff is that. God dang, are you kidding me? He is crazy. Goodness gracious. That is absolutely insane. I I don't understand how he's created such a huge body of work. It'll it'll always just be insane to me. I said, I said, like the the um his most recent sketchbook is a, probably two years worth of work. It could be three, but but it's huge. The book is gigantic, and I mean, I'm telling you, if you did that in a lifetime, you could set down the pencil and go like, I did really good. I've got an insane body of work that's that's just, you know, there's detail, there's variety, like it's that's all of it. And he did that for years. Okay, we're getting to the end. The average view time on this video will be like six minutes too. <laughs> like it's like an hour and a half video. It's like I got through like five minutes of it. And then it's like... No, the hardcore people will see the whole thing. This is cool. I've never seen this. Really interesting piece. This gives me anxiety. It was funny. I had someone someone was talking about. Uh, I had posted a sketch of a, this huge staircase that I was going to draw, and I had very loose pencils. And they said, the thought of inking that gives me anxiety. The thought of finishing this piece gives me anxiety because it's like getting a sketch to this point isn't so hard. It's a really nice sketch, though. Don't get don't confuse what I'm saying. But the idea of finishing this with all the feathers and stuff like that, I'm just like, oh, my God. I don't even know, like... I don't even know how I would approach it and how detailed I would get. It's 
like I it's like you go is it worth spending six days on feathers <laughs> I need to find a faster way to draw a little bit pretty nice drawing the content is, is different <laughs> she's cute <laughs> she seems like <a> fun girl <laughs> I don't know what to say <laughs> oh man these are great damn holy shit this is good I had to draw a bunch of stuff like this in Crystal Planet issue 1 and I wanted to die <laughs> It's like, how many pages of office scenes are there? Are you kidding me? I'm the monster guy. I can't draw. I don't want to draw this. No offices for me. Man, I wish I would have seen this. I would have come up with better shots. <laughs> I really like how he drew the chair, too. And the chair is great. Yeah, this is nice. He's got the tower underneath the, the desk little printer fax machine this is so long ago this is probably a fax machine i don't know maybe, maybe it's a printer wow god damn that is so nice unbelievable so good It's weird that it's a sword, and then this guy is, I guess, dying from the whack? I don't know. Man, I have no idea what this is supposed to mean. Oh, okay. All right, you guys have a good day. This was very, very difficult, as you saw, for me to get going on this video. It's just, it's very, very sad. It's a huge loss. I, I honestly think that it'll take me a week or so to really be able to like fully comprehend like the magnitude of it. But again, I, I think like you have to try to find some sort of positive in something like this. The only positive that I can think of right now is just that he he really did inspire a lot of people to be creative and to draw. And he set a he set a very, very high bar that, you know, like you don't have to go for something like that. But you could enjoy drawing and just, you know, have a passion for art like he did. And um, his body of work speaks for itself. It's something that you could go back to again and again and again and find probably hundreds, if not thousands, of drawings that you haven't seen. So, anyway, you guys have a great day. Everyone be safe out there and stay healthy. And, you know, it's a testament to taking care of yourself. I've been really actually working hard to eat healthier and exercise every day. Um, and I definitely this morning was ironically the day that I started actually feeling pretty good where I was like, okay, I'm starting to feel good, you know, like a little, I'm a little healthier. My shirt fits good. Things are heading the right direction. Um, I still got a long way to go, but I could notice the improvement of me being disciplined for the last 10 days. And, um, you know, this is just a reminder. It's like, man, you know, you can't mess around with your health. It's just not a joke. So, all right, everyone be safe and be healthy. And um, I'll be back tomorrow with, um, I think I'm going to do Crinkle. And then we'll do Michael Kaluta. And then we'll get back into, like, more um, manga stuff. But have a good day. And I hope that you enjoyed the art in the video. So, all right, bye.